Greetings everyone, this is Lauren Expert back again with another video. Today we will be solving problem number 11 in daily coin problem and the difficulty it's been rated at is medium. Uh, this problem was asked by Twitter and let's just get down to it. So the problem description is asking us to implement an autocomplete system. Uh, that is given a query string S and a set of all possible query strings to turn all strings in the set that have S as a prefix. For example, given the query string DE and the set of strings dog, deer, deal, return, deer, and deal, since they start with DE and yeah, so deer starts with DE and so does deal, so therefore we need to return those two values. Um, they were given us a little bit of a hint, and the hint is try pre processing the dictionary into a more efficient data structure to speed up the queries. All right, cool. So, if you know what an autocomplete system is, skip ahead. Uh, but an autocomplete system or type ahead is something which you see most of the times when you type in, let's say, on your Google search bar, right? It's not exactly an autocomplete feature over here because over there there's an entire ranking algorithm. Um, but a better example I would think would be if you have a list of all the countries in the drop down. And if you type in something, it basically does a prefix search on it or a simple pattern matching and just tries to check whatever matches together and returns back the result. So this has a variety of applications in the real world. And in the real world, you would see this implemented like really easily in a lot of other places as well. All right, so fortunately we were able to find a problem description which was a little similar. Um, on lead code, even though it's not the same exact question, it's pretty similar. I mean, the data structure which we'll be using is pretty similar. Um, one thing before we sort of move ahead, I want to explain this thing that um, although this seems like a very easy problem, and it is, because all you have to do is you just have to check a query string, and that's just doing a simple prefix. So, so you could do that easily with all the elements in the array. Um, but we want to what we want to do is we want to make this as efficient as possible. All right, so let's get down to it. Um, oh, and one more thing before we start. The way to make this more optimal is by using a data structure called as a tree. So uh, basically what we'll be doing today is implementing a tree structure, and that's it. All right, let's get down to the lead code problem. So as you can see here, the lead code problem is just that implement a tree and it's also called a prefix tree. And if you don't know what a tree is, you can Google it. It's pretty simple. It's basically like a, a tree, uh, but instead of you know having only two children, you can have multiple children and all of them are sort of related to the number of characters that you have. So if you have, let's say, I'll just you know try commenting it over here. Let's say that you have two things, cat and cash, right? Um, basically, a representation of this would be somewhat like this. Like you will have cat, you will have a child. I mean, I know this is not exact, but yeah, it's going to be something like this. Uh, and also, you're going to have this thing. So you'll have T here. You can have S here. Um, and you'll have it. Oh, this is not perfect. Um, I apologize for that, but this is just to give you a representation of what a tree would look like. So all you have to do is while parsing it, and you can Google this as well. So it's just basic. So all you're doing is while parsing it, you're just storing it in such a way that's a tree structure. And while you're sort of going to parse through all the elements, all you have to do is while checking it, um, you're going to be checking it at a complexity of log instead of uh, checking it in the complexity of O of n. So that's the optimization that a tree sort of brings up. Um, and it's not really that memory efficient, but speed-wise, it's pretty optimal. Okay, I hope I've explained what a tree is, uh, and we'll get get to this entire problem statement. We'll try to understand what all do we have to do because it's a little different, right? Um, so what it's asking us to do is it's asking us to create a class, um, and in it, an insert, and insert is basically going to be a function which is going to insert the word inside our tree structure. A search, a search is going to be uh, us searching for an entire word, I would believe, and starts with is basically the prefix search that we want to implement. So we'll have to implement all these functions, uh, but it's pretty simple. Most people don't understand how a tree is sort of implemented, um, but if you sort of think about it, it can be construed as a hash of hashes, right? Uh, or dictionaries of dictionaries. 
Um, so we'll get on to the implementation and while I'm going through the code, I'll try to explain it as well, right? So at the very beginning uh, in the constructor itself, what I want to do is I want to maintain something called as a nodes variable. And nodes variable is basically going to be a dictionary. The reason I'm creating a dictionary over here is basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the character value as the key, whichever character I'm going to encounter and whatever values which can correspond to it, that that'll be the value right and the value will also be a hash and we're going to be traversing through that entire thing so we'll do self notes right and self notes is a dictionary and this is the most important thing about it right um let's get down to the insert so insert is going to be pretty easy for us because all we have to do is we have to understand whether there's a word already existing over here but before we do that let's just quickly do uh, let's just basically make a hash of um, you know creating an entire word so let's do that all we're trying to do again over here is basically like if i have a if i have something as an apple it should be constructed as a, a hash of hashes right so a would be the first thing which will have another dictionary where p will be a value will be a key which will have a value which will be another dictionary which will have p again and then l again and e again uh, also, one thing which you would have noticed over here is that we would require a delimiter as well, so that we understand that this word has ended. So we'll take care of that scenario as well, uh, but let's just get down to it, right? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say for element in word, we're just traversing through the, oh, sorry, iterating through the entire word, and while we're doing that, the only thing that we're sort of making sure is that we're sort of appending inside our nodes variable. So let's just make something called as node, and let's do self notes, right? Uh, and all we need to do is we just need to sort of append into this value. So we'll say node or element. Um, I think element is not right word. I think char would be better since we are sort of, you know, iterating through the entire string and we're getting characters. Um, the first thing that we're doing is we just, you know, creating a key and a value. And the value is just going to be a dictionary. Um, and now all we have to do is basically we want to say that node is equal to node char. So when we do this, uh, basically the reference itself node sort of remains the same. But what we've constructed is somewhat of a representation of an tree. So let's sort of write the delimiter as well. Let's write node um, and node. Let's just create a hash as the delimiter. Um, and this will just basically represent that, you know, we've reached our limit. All right, cool. and this has to be done after the iteration. So this is this is just a simple representation, right, of, you know, you just getting a string, and that's just one single string for now. You're just getting one string, and you're just converting it into a dictionary of dictionaries, multiple dictionaries, right? So if you have something like cat, right, the following representation right now, would be C, um, then A, uh, then T, uh, then a hash, and that's it, right? Uh, I hope this makes sense. But now what we want to do is we not handle the biggest scenario, right? What happens if I send in something as cache? Now we don't want our dictionary to get overwritten. So, but what we want in this scenario is that when we have cache, over here um after t that is like if this is t ending over here we want s as well to come in and h to come in and hash to come in and this will basically be our representation so when we have that our tree is going to look like this and we'll do a few prints here and there so that we understand that uh, but right now what the way we have implemented it it's basically going to override the entire value Okay. So we need to take care of that situation. And the way we're going to like, sort of take care of that is by basically iterating through all those values till we encounter um, a key which has which is not present inside the dictionary. Right? So it's very simple. All we have to do is we just do for i and we'll do car again and enumerate. And what we're enumerating with is the word itself. The reason why we maintain the index is because I want to understand when I'm breaking off my loop so that I can start it again from another place, right? Um, and what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna say if car not in node, break, right? 
And if it is inside the node, all I want to do is I'm going to update the node itself because we're using node as our reference while we're iterating through it. Um, and what I want to do is I want my word to start with the ith value. Um, it's going to be i plus one. <clears throat> yep. So if you don't understand what I'm doing over here, it's basically uh, when we were supposing cat and cache sort of coming in. At that particular moment of time, uh, as soon as we encounter, okay, so when we encounter C, we just go ahead. If we encounter A, we go ahead. But when we encounter S, which is not that particular tree structure, we are going to say that we want to break out of the loop because now we want to construct or we sort of want to add a key to our tree structure, right? So that's what's happening over here. As soon as we encounter something which is not the same, we break out of it. And that's that's all that there's to it. Um, and if you know there's no match whatsoever, if we have cat and dog, you know, I is still going to be equal to actually in that case, I should sort of take care of that. So what I'm gonna do is instead of um you know doing I plus one, I'll do an iteration over here. The reason why I'm doing an iteration over here, it's basically that what happens if I have cat and dog, right? Um, those values don't have any similarities whatsoever. So basically our entire break would happen in the very beginning and we would not have to worry about all these values and I would remain zero. Uh, I hope this makes sense. It's pretty simple. Um, there's not much here to it, um, but let's go ahead. Right. So what we've done till now is basically construct an entire representation of dictionary of dictionaries. <clears throat> and now what we can do is we can search through the value. And while you're searching through the value, the search is basically going to be in the complexity of log of n, where the base is equal to at, at max 26 or somewhere on those lines, 27 or whatever. Right. Um, but it's basically a, a log value. Um, and that's what we want to sort of you know <clears throat> encounter. Okay, cool. So let's get down to the search implementation. The search implementation is pretty simple. All you have to do is you just have to make sure that node that we were sort of using as the value is finding that value, right? So when we are sort of iterating through the entire word, um, if the character is not inside our node, then we just return false. Otherwise, we just you know keep on iterating. Oh, sorry, or otherwise we just keep on iterating and updating the node. So node car over here. Mm -hmm. And all we want to do is if we encounter the delimiter in our node, what that would denote is it would denote that you know there is a break at this particular value and the search we're basically doing an entire search of a of a word. So in that case we can turn the true. Otherwise, it can turn false. Again, if you don't understand what this is, um, so delimiter was sort of helping us understand that the word has ended, right? The search function does an entire iteration to just check whether an entire word is there inside the tree. Not a substring, but an entire word. So if an entire word is there, our node would have a hash value or delimiter, which we had used over here. And when it has that value, the hash value, we know that for a fact that, you know, we've iterated through the entire search result. And that is that's what's there. Uh, otherwise, if we encounter something that's not inside our node, we're just going to say we just need to return false. Um, that's our implementation for you know, searching for one word. For searching a prefix, it's even simpler because all we have to do is the concept still remains the same. We're just iterating over the entire entire string, uh, entire word. So we do car word. And uh, of course, if we do not encounter car. In our node, we can say that this is not a value. So, as you remember, um, in our in our previous coding problem, we were expecting the result to return the list of all the values which had a prefix attached to it, right, uh, or matching to it. But over here, we need to return a boolean, right? Um, and returning a list is pretty simple because all you have to do is you just have to keep on appending it inside the list. Right, whenever you encounter a hash. Uh, but since we're not going to do that, we're just going to you know return a true value or boolean value. Therefore, we just need to iterate over it. Um, if the iteration sort of succeeds and everything goes off well, um, we can just return a true. So as soon as we hit a true, 
we know for a fact that you know all the prefixes happen uh, all the values inside the prefix search have been enumerated and nothing else needs to be enumerated now and we can return a true so that's the uh, that's the entire implementation there's not much here to it um, it's pretty simple um, and let's just try as I mentioned before, I'm going to try to do a print so that we understand, we can look at how the structure has been sort of built out, right? So we can do sort of notes at the end so that we see the delimiter as well. Right? Um, yeah, it seems good. Uh, let's just try running this once. Hopefully, I should. I'm not really too sure whether we'll be able to get a print. Um, hopefully, we should. Okay, so we got an error over here, uh, line number 58, word, whoops, so the character is not word, it's a prefix, uh, that's my fault, I apologize, oh, but the structure was sort of given below, alright, cool, so let's look at how our structure is made, so you can remove, you can sort of not worry about the unicodes, uh, that's okay, um, that's just a feature, so as you can see over here, what's happening is, uh, we inserted the value twice, so we inserted I believe we've inserted Apple and what else have we inserted? Ah, okay, an app. So we've inserted app as well as Apple, right? Uh, while we're doing that, what's happening is, you know, as soon as we get A, P, P, L, E, and then delimiter. And also since app already exists, you know, we want to understand whether app exists inside the value or not. So we do A, P, P, L will obviously be, be there, but we also need a delimiter to notify that this word, there is a word as app as well, right? Um, and that's why the delimiter is over here, and that's all that there is to it. There's not much. <clears throat> and also, if you want to do a pretty print, you can do that. I'm not really too sure on how lead code sort of handles its libraries, but <clears throat> if you're comfortable with that, you can do that as well. Um, cool. And also, one thing which you have to note is the else attribute over here. Um, that's the more important part. We, so when we're sort of iterating our um, index to understand what that value is, that's also very, very important. All right, cool. Um, so that's it for now. Um, that's the entire implementation. I'll just submit this solution, try to see whether it's working fine, and it is. It's pretty fast. It's, as you can see, it's 98.37% fast. Uh, percent fast. Uh, the reason for that is just because we're doing dictionaries of dictionaries of dictionaries and so on and so forth, right? Um, okay, so that's it for this video. It's been a pretty long video. I wanted to explain how Tray works, and I hope you've got a better understanding, and whenever somebody asks you a question like this, you're not going to get scared because you know how a tree, tray can be implemented. All right. Um, if you like this video, please do give a like and subscribe. We have been posting videos daily. And if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to comment it. Um, I would love to answer your queries. And have a great day. You're awesome. We all know it. Thank you.